Totally awesome fishing show time again. Do you know, I've had so many fish in the last year or two on two baits, so simple and easy. Bread and prawns, both from the supermarket. Here's a few clips of some action I had. Guys, just check it out. You can learn how fish take crust off the top and the prawns, it's got to be the smell that gets the fish, surely. Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I'm down here at Finch Farm sitting in the sunshine and I'm going to try and tell you a few spots worth trying for fish. I've never fished this, well this is the larger lake they've got here, they've got sort of two small pools and a slightly larger lake and I'm going to be showing you some of the spots worth looking at because a lot of anglers just sit there in the one spot. I tend to move around a bit but I've put the brolly up, you're going to get jet noise, we're near Heathrow and there's lots of those things flying around up there. Also, some really good wildlife, which, you know, you, you, you'd be amazed where you are, other than the jets. If we could get rid of the jets, it would be really quite an idyllic setting. Fabulous day. I'm going to be freelining, probably on the top and looking for fish. Maybe carp. Here comes a jumbo, so I'm going to have to get this over quickly. I'm going to grab some lunch first. First things first, I've got, I'm all rigged up. I'm going to have a flask of sandwiches, and then we'll get cracking. Here's one totally awesome tip guys, we've all probably been there. If you're striking and you're next to your rods and you're striking with your right hand, float fishing especially, don't drink like this will you? Because when you go for the rod it's whoosh, all over you or worse the cup goes down there. Not a great place for hot tea or hot coffee. Hold it your left hand, keep your striking hand ready. We all know if you have a sandwich and a cup of tea, something's going to happen. Okay, I'm going to be using a sort of double attack, a double pronged attack here. Avon rod, I bought the wrong sections, I bought quiver tip sections because that's what I was doing on another film recently. A waggler float, which is shotted either side locking shot there, just a waggler. It's loaded there, it's got the self-cocking weight. Nothing all the way to the hook because I want to just rest in about three feet of water and something that some of you tackled hearts, well, you're going to be shocked. It's one of these. Look, this is the technical rig. A hook. That's right. I'm going to be looking for fish on the surface. Here comes one of those big steel birds again. So I'll come back to you in a minute. Now, I've been having a bit of a freezer clear out. I've got frozen maggots, obviously dead. Frozen casters, frozen worms, all left over. Frozen bread, sliced bread. Oh, and some frozen prawns left over from the winter's perch fishing. What you want to do, you can use the flake of a sliced bread, break it out, and you can break it up in pieces, right? Let's put the hook up there. You're better off if you can get a pair of scissors and cut them into, I suppose, about inch square pieces like that. I like uniformity of crust, and obviously on the edges as well, snip the crust off and cut them into sections. I use the white bait, white bait? The white bread in the center for feed, for bringing them up. If you squeeze it, it'll go doughy and it will sink. And I use the edges of the crust snipped up for my hook baits. I'm gonna be using these prawns I got out of the freezer as well, left over from a perch fishing trip. I'm gonna give those a go on the float on the bottom. But the big thing is, guys, when you first turn up at a fishery that you haven't been to before, it doesn't hurt to have a good old look around. Get yourself a pair of polarizing glasses, a peak cap, and just go looking. Get yourself a swim by all means. Maybe ask the fishery manager, you know, where to go. Get that swimmer. Just have a little look around and plumb the depth through your float before you put any bait in. Very often it can pay off, especially along the edges of rushes. Now then, there's many ways to do it, but if you're using regular sliced bread, which is the cheapest, I find cut it up with a pair of scissors and you get them all pretty much the same size. Hook goes through the white side first. Then I just roll it carefully around the bend without breaking it, twist it, and I just tuck the point in there so the point is resting and pinch the dough over the eye of the hook. You want to make sure you don't crush too much of the bread, otherwise, you know, it's going to mess up the hook in. The inside of the bread, so using the crust, cut up the white inside as well. And if you cut that about the same size, as the uh, items you're using on the hook, you know, the floating crust, they just get used to seeing that one size on the water. Also, in addition to that, 
if you're fishing on the bottom try using some prawns they are really really good baits i've done excellent on this year obviously i've used them many years before but they're really really good on the bottom i don't know what it is it's just weird this you get in the supermarket you buy a packet of prawns largest hook maybe you're gonna say about a size four uh, or a size six barbless hook and just roll them around and there you go instant bait now i can't use floating crust on this it's already put some out and there's a mallard duck with some young around there little ducklings going around and they found the bread so if there are birds about don't use a floating crust but i can maybe have a chance of this carp he's feeding i think on the pellets down that literally i mean i'm, I'm not i kid you not a foot or two feet from the bank so i'm going to put a piece of this soft flake on quite a big piece with the hook so that it sinks on the bottom get your flake i just go through it the once like this and i fold the flake back around onto the line i don't pinch it onto the hook i want just a little pinch there to hold it to the line and i want it to sink but if you can see there before the next plane comes over the hook points there and i'm just going to lower it down there and watch the quiver tip while i sort myself out i might get lucky with the first fish just don't be afraid to lower right in front of you. Look, you can see when I'm fishing, I'm kneeling down and I'm dropping that piece of crust maybe six inches from the bank in front of me. Obviously, I've seen a fish come up there. Same old Graham thing. Check that drag. And I've got a quiver tip rod as well. And just throw a few loose samples in there as well. It's a commercial water. You don't need to be in full camouflage gear. They really are aware that you're there. You can also just fish the quiver tip rod just resting over the edge if you want to fish a piece of flake on the bottom. You'll find that the flake will swell up underwater, but once you move that, it will come off. And that's what you want. Don't squeeze it on so tight that it actually moulds into a dough and blocks the hook point. You can also put some little freebies in, just roll them up, just squeeze them enough, test it until they sink, and throw these pellets in like this, exactly where you think that fish is going to come back. And give him some freebies. You can see here, just scattering loose samples of centre of the flake of the bread, and letting it sink to the bottom right underneath where I lower my quiver tip rod so it doesn't have to float on the surface but it might be say a couple of feet three feet deep he hasn't come back I'm going to do a little bit of stalking I'll put some more pellets in I'm going to get some of those little four mil uh, pellets so put some right in the margins because very often even though that fish is gone I'm pretty sure he's going to come back there some stage through the day maybe late afternoon so I'm going to do a little bit of stalking. My bait's still out. I haven't even float fished yet. I'm going to just scout around while the sun's up and I can see odd fish moving around. I might try and get a crust in front of one and get one to take even in the middle of the day. Now just look how close to the margins I'm scanning here. There's a tiny shadow line. Can you see it? Just a, a bit of a shadow line about, I'm going to say it's four or five inches from the rush stem itself sticking out. Just there, if I zoom in, look at those ripples. That's a carp. Just that slight ripple there is a carp. And there's a the fish. He's nosing a leaf at the moment. And very often they will come up on the surface looking for stuff floating. And there's one just taking little piece of crust off the top you notice how slow he comes up out I go straight on his nose sit back and wait and just watch when it doesn't all go according to plan Well, I've lost that fish. The light's changed as well. It's clouding up, and I know it's going to cloud right over, so I'm taking advantage 
of that extra light because the, the brighter sunlight will push them in those margin edges in the shadow lines. And with the sun behind me, I should be able to see better. So I've come to the other lake. This is the catfish lake, not catfishy. And I can see some rushes, stems just bumping like that. And I'm going to see if I can spot one individually cruising and see if I can't plant a piece of crust in front of it and at least get me off the mark. And I can see, I see shapes that I think, I don't think they're weed beds because it's just drifting slowly. Middle of the day like this, it is half past 12. Very often carp will do sort of basking in the sunshine. Can you blame them? Section on one of the larger lakes here. I'm looking for any wind drift that blows down that channel. Because you're looking for anything. Look at my bread there. It's in the middle. It's painfully obvious. Nothing is taking it. So I can actually sort of float fish or ledger on the bottom in a different area and still keep a lookout for fish moving on the surface. That's why I like using floating crust. You check with all your fisheries whether it's allowed or not. Some places do, some places don't. And look where that bread's gone, right in close, actually touching the stems of the reeds. And that's where a lot of the carp are going to get. They're going to get round the edges. They just feel, I suppose they feel safe there. Even little patches of lilies, see that piece of weed, that rubbish? Check everything out in case there's something there. Well, guys, there's one single uh, carp laying with his head right into the bank. It shows you how close they come in. I might be able to drop a piece of crust on him. I'm not going to throw any loose ones. I'm going to put one piece of crust as close as I can on his head. I've got a breeze behind me. He might take, he might even be asleep. OK, now remember I told you to look for anything. Oh, gosh. Is there anything there? No, surely not. Scan a bit more, and what's that? A carp basking in the summer sunshine. What a classic case for Graham to drop a single piece of bread. I don't use a lot of bread when it's like that. Just I like to use a single static piece of bread. Just dropping it on his nose. Can you see it there? Watch him take it. Watch him take it. Oh, no. Oh, has he got it? Has he got it? Are you going to strike? When are you going to strike, Graham? Kaboom! Fish on. Oh, I love it. I love it, me. I love it. But we haven't got the fish yet, but he's on. Tell you what, another one's took up position in exactly the same spot sunbathing. It must be the equivalent of the beach in uh, Tenerife. Got to keep vertical on this fish. Maybe you noticed exactly how long he took before he sucked that bread in. Man, he's not done yet. Nice fish. Wow. <laughs> well, though it's windy, he did actually work in my favour. Oh, still, buddy. Very steep humpback common carp. Look at that one. Floating crust by moving while well, my other swim is getting some fish over it. Just a little scout around, have a look out, check out some swims, and that's what we come up with. Great sport. I can't emphasize enough how to look for structure or feature. That bush that's overhanging, okay? Along that shadow line, another piece of overhanging rubbish. Oh gosh, Graham's right, here you go. See that black line there, right on the edge of the overhang? If I zoom in, Slowly and carefully and not disturbing it is, yes, it's another basking carp. So you've got to keep looking. That's without polarising glasses, folks. There's two fish I've seen in two different spots, right up tight by the edge of the rushes. So I've got a single piece of crust, and I just skip it across the surface right on the edge there, and hopefully a customer comes up to take it. Here he comes. Two fish, can you see? There's a third fish under there. But see how the fourth, there's a fourth fish there. There's four fish in a row. That's good competitive feeding. There's no question one's going to take. And boom. Hook up, boys. Hook up. It's what I like to see. You cannot beat float fishing or free lining right on the surface. <laughs>
there you go beautiful looking fish off the surface best way I love catching one like that and I haven't I haven't even gone back to my other swim yet okay this is a more a open patch of water but there you go there's the aeration or sort of paddle machine they use but you zoom in you can see a float somebody else has obviously lost a float there around the metal pole going across I'm scanning along the edge of the rushes because that's where they're going to be and if there's a bit of colour in the water in the centre of the picture if I zoom in it's just a barely discernible but it is indeed a carp lying stationary underneath the surface there's a nice shadow line underneath that green bush but somewhere like that is always worth looking now you can just throw bread out in the middle floating crust on any lake indeed and let it, let, let it drift around and just watch it or you can try and target fish the you know the, the single fish that are cruising around or that you spot but it's certainly an interesting way to do your fishing Yeah, you can even see one of my squares of bread that I've cut up and dropped in the margins. I just look along the rushes. I just walked along my own bank and seen that dark shape of a carp that appears either totally oblivious to me or asleep. He's not even bothered by the camera extending right over the top of his head. But a lot of these fish are catchable. And here I've done a bit of float fishing. In the swim, as you can see, while you're, while you're using the crust on the surface, you can fish for all these other fish. And there's a, a skimmer bream that I, I've taken on a float maggots. Down on the near side, there is, yes, that's right, my crust has drifted in there. So I've seen some rings and ripples coming out from the uh, edge of the rushes. I'm going to try and hold the camera in the right hand and hook the fish, if I can, present it even, with my left hand. But of course, I'm not left-handed I'm right-handed but just trying to get you guys a hook up as it happens not faked up not one of those faked up ones see if he takes it just going to move it again in front of his nose if you do get it right they variably they will come up and take it just going to have patience patience pays kaboom fish hooked up
The guy's got a fish on the float. I don't think it's a carp somehow. Maybe it is, small carp on maggots. I was just filming up. Uh, it is sort of koi type thing. I didn't even see the float go. <laughs> I just saw, I was looking through the lens trying to film a carp on the top and I saw the rod shake it. Looks like a koi actually. It is. I would say with the marks on this, some form of ghost or koi. Pretty little fish, nice one to catch on the float. And that was on maggots, four maggots on the bottom in the baited swim. What the hell? What is this, eh? What is this? My God, I need... Well, I've got sunglasses. <laughs> what the hell? A monster goldfish. Look at the size of it. Is it a goldfish? It's like a goldfish to me. I don't think, I don't think it's a gold north. I don't. Very, very fat. Very wiggly. Let's get him off the hook. My God, what colours. Good job I'm wearing sunglasses. Well, it's not that funny. There you go. That is something really weird. And that's sitting in the swim now. I'm getting fish for that. I guess it's golden off of a perch. Lost a carp. And I fear something's going to come on the inside. And this, wait for it, was on. Brawl. Well, guys, the margin rod just folded round. It didn't even beep. It didn't even have it in the buzzer just saw the quiver tip pull round and that was that carp that was digging right under my feet very dark looking fish, I hope I can get him in and show them to you it's peeling now it's not a bad fish, he's eight pounds, I don't know seven, seven's eight and that was on prawn Very slow, confident bite there. And that's because I've been fishing those other lakes. I put the bait in first, then cleared off and left them for an hour. He's around a snag, he's around the weeds. Yeah, nice one. I think this one is a mirror. Well, this one certainly give me a run for my money. There you go, he's in. Let's get him on the mat and I'll show him to you. Nice looking mirror carp. And again, that was on prawn. Now there's a carp just very, very barely taking tiny bits of bread off the surface. They're not all big boils and big swirls. They can cruise around just under the surface. And if you've got polarizing glasses, a long peak cap, you can see them. Now look at those fish in the rushes. If you see them bumping and banging, there's even a goldfish in there. That's another sign. You look at the movements. These fish aren't really breaking the surface, but look, any movement like that, I'm zoomed in, obviously, but from a distance, there goes my piece of bread. Bang. Nothing like bread crust to get the excitement going. Six carp now to about nine pounds. I come back to the swim because I've seen a fish moving right close in here. I'm going to get down, well, at least spend a little bit of time on the float. And fingers crossed, after getting that one on the old head cam, I'll get rid of the head cam, sit back, have a sandwich, chill out, and see if there's anything moved in my baited up swim. Another tip while I'm waiting, guys, is don't let your bread dry out in the sun. Try and keep it in the shade. If it dries out, it's going to go crusty and hard. It's only good for throwing in. It will not stay on the hook. 
Oh my God, I've just seen one in the rushes, so close. I think I can barely get a rod to it. Just drifting in. If he comes out again, I'll see if I can show it to you. Well, I've done really well, bouncing between. I'm on now, wait for this, if I get it. 14 carp, a goldfish, some other weird stuff as well. Had a great time. Bouncing between floating crust, changing swims. Oh, come out. Fishing in the margins on prawn and float fishing with prawn. Probably floating crust and prawn are the top two, less on the maggots. I'll get this one in, show it to you. Thanks for watching. A totally awesome fishing show. There you go guys, what I call a saddleback, see the scales along the top, unbelievable scrap, floating crust, am I going home? No, not yet. Well, there you go guys, you can see some action on the surface in slow motion of how those carp are so crafty, they come up, they don't always explode all over the piece of bread, they just sip it down. And if you don't get them off the top, you know you can go on the bottom float or ledger and pick them up on prawn. Good luck with the fishing. We'll see you next time. Hit that TA and TA Outdoors and TA Fishing double whammy buttons. And also don't forget that other little tinkly bell. It's notification. It tells you when our films come up. Yes, they could come up twice, sometimes even three times a week. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.